Place the night before Christmas Eve as many hope to travel and spend the holiday with families and loved ones. Uh, travel advisories in effect on the roads in Monroe County and driving bans in place in Orleans County. We continue our team coverage tonight with 13 WHAMS. Carla Rogner joining us live from the Rochester Airport where flights are grounded tonight. Carla, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Matt. The word of the day here at the Rochester Airport is canceled. No flights are going in or going out, and it's left some people stranded here, hoping they can get to their destinations in time for Christmas. Olivia Dodds is spending the night before Christmas Eve at the Rochester Airport. I had a flight out tomorrow morning, and I had to get here before the storm hit Fort Drum. So we left Fort Drum like a little after one. And when we were mostly here, my flight got canceled, but it was safer to just come to the airport and stay here than to try and drive back through the storm. So when I got here, I found out that all the flights were canceled for tonight too, so I didn't have a way out, so we're kind of here for the night at least. She was hoping to get to Washington State in time for Christmas, but there are no more flights available online until Wednesday. If I can't get a flight tomorrow, I just have to test my luck the next day. I don't know. She's not the only one left stranded by the storm. Mario Lane's flight to Florida canceled after driving here from Buffalo. Game plan now is maybe to hit the road and maybe try to make it back to Buffalo. You know, see some of my family there, but that's not even looking possible. Man, hopefully the bars open out here in Rochester, <laughs> man. Some, some IPAs, man. I'm ready to go have an IPA. Some were lucky. Brad Willard is picking up his daughter, one of the few flights that made it in today. They were flying in JetBlue and everything around them was diverted, diverted, diverted. And uh, the security fellow was on the phone. So JetBlue looks like they're going to make an attempt to land, which brave. <laughs> <laughs> now travelers like Olivia adding a plane ticket to their last minute Christmas list. It's weather. There's not much you can do about it. And it is what it is at this point. I'm here, so I'm going to make it work. to the airports here that a lot of the flights that are going out and coming in tomorrow you you can see here um, at the airport on the boards here lots of the flights that are coming in and going out tomorrow are already canceled especially the ones leaving early in the day many airlines are offering waivers to change your flight if you are still hoping to fly it is recommended that you check your flight status before coming to the airport continue our team coverage now a mad dash to stock up on groceries and christmas presents before this big storm local officials asking people to stay home when the weather turns and the state thruway issuing a ban on some trucks 13 whams carla rogner joining us live from the thruway tonight carla good evening yeah, good evening, Matt. The state has issued a travel advisory starting tomorrow morning. All tandem and empty tractor trailer trucks will be banned from the state thruway from here in Henrietta all the way to the Pennsylvania state border. In the meantime, people were rushing to the grocery store and other stores tonight to stock up on everything they need so they can abide by emergency officials advice and stay home over the next few days. Packed parking lots in Brockport. It's kind of crazy. I expected this tomorrow. You know, this is a Christmas Eve crowd. It's it's filled all the way to the back roads back there. People making a mad dash to the grocery store, grabbing all the essentials ahead of the big storm. Um, a couple of things I needed last minute, like cheesecake. Can't survive a storm without cheesecake. Uh, just getting some stuff for Christmas morning. So cinnamon rolls, orange juice, a couple things, but it was a little crazy in there. Yeah, I got like the last two gallons of skim milk. Not a lot, anything left. This storm on its way at the worst time, just before Christmas. Well, I'm going to turn the heat up in the house so that when I lose power, I stay warm for a little bit longer. I've got plenty of food, and uh, I'm putting the garbage cans in the garage. So when the wind hits, I won't have to worry about them. Ronald Richard says he's ready for when he loses power, and RG&E is preparing for that possibility. We are in storm mode now here at RG&E. We have pre-staged our normal contingent of tree and line crews uh, across our divisions and added 330 additional crews to help with the storm this weekend. The strong winds possibly leading to power outages across the region. Our customers should plan ahead. This is going to be a significant storm. Charge your phones, have drinking water available. If you are on well water, have some, well, have some water set aside for the things that you might need to do. RG&E says it has prepared for what these next few days could bring, and so have these shoppers. Just Merry Christmas. I mean, 
you know, good luck. Hopefully everybody gets where they got to go tomorrow and safely. And both the city of Rochester and Monroe County have issued states of emergency ahead of this storm. Again, that travel advisory for some commercial vehicles on the New York State Thruway goes into effect in the morning. Here since the tragic murder of two firefighters from West Webster on Christmas Eve, Chase Howell shows us how the community is honoring the pair. Photos, newspaper articles, and memories of 19-year-old Tomas Kachufka and 43-year-old Mike Ciparini fill West Webster's remembrance room. The two volunteer firefighters were tragically killed 10 years ago on Christmas Eve when a man shot them as they were responding to a fire on Lake Road. People say time heals, but time doesn't heal. Time makes the details fuzzy. Al Sinkowitz with West Webster Fire Department says since December 24th, 2012, a day meant for cheer, has been a day marked by tragedy for him and the other first responders who were on scene that fateful morning. These people, these men and women, will live with us forever. And, he's, and it's true. It's absolutely true. I mean, it's just, you know, a damper on things. You, you, uh, you learn to accept it. You learn to move on. You learn to do what you need to do for the community. But it's there. As people walk through the memorial, look at the photos, and see the wall lined with who showed support to the department at that difficult time, Sinkowitz hopes the memorial brings some sense of healing. I think it's helped them. I think it's helped us, and hopefully the people have gone through. That was Chase Howell reporting. Two other firefighters, Joseph Hofstetter and Ted Scardino, were also injured that morning. The memorial is open to the public starting tomorrow.